because billions are rolling in to the insiders. And then the Uber drivers themselves go out, buy a new car, do this. They can be dismissed. They'll say, oh, we found out three years ago you had a speeding ticket. You didn't tell us about that. We're with revoking for a year or for two years. Oh, and they don't have to pay taxes. They don't have to pay insurance. All their workers are contractors at Uber. And so, again, the taxis have to be part of a union. They have to have all the, the, this bonding. They have to pay for everything. They have to be on the hook. They get written the tickets. But then when it comes to Uber, again, like Walmart, it's screwing everybody over. So Uber may be a great alternative to taxis. It does bring some competition to taxis, but it's not level playing field, and it's very unfair. And Uber itself is a very draconian, anti-free market, monopolistic, fascistic company, in my humble view. Let's go to the phone calls. Ben in Missouri, you're on the air. Hey, Alex. Um, I agree with you completely about Uber. They'll, uh, incrementally, incrementally, you know, they'll designate more and more roads to be, you know, uh, driverless cars only. And then they'll give those areas the tax break, breaks, and they'll build up those areas until anybody who doesn't want to be on a driverless uh, car system won't even be able to live and work. And it's all a part of the... Uh, they admit that's their plan. plan. They admit that's their plan. That's what's so frustrating. People think I keep predicting stuff uh, you know, a decade or two before. I'm not. They have an admitted rollout plan. I mean, I remember 10 years ago or more reading that they would just raise insurance on driver cars, human cars, until we go bankrupt, just like coal power plants. And they're just going to do it. And then Uber and a few other companies like Google are going to have the monopoly or the oligopoly on it. It's highway robbery. And then it brings total control, centralization, everything's automated and run by the central computers, controlled by the technocracy. That's why the globalist at Club of Rome in the 60s and Zbigniew Brzezinski in the 70s, in the technotronic era, say, we're going to build a world government run by a technocracy controlled by computers. Then they sell the idea through Zeitgeist and the rest of it, the New York Times endorses, that, oh, we're doing all this because it empowers humanity. No, it doesn't. And computers, they're... They're not racist. Computers just do the right thing. No, they don't. They do as they're programmed. But see, in the new political correctness thing, the computers will make all the decisions so that there's no racism involved. You understand? And now they're saying it's racist against computers if you warn of the bad uses of technology. How do you like that? So there's going to be laws when they start claiming computers are sentient that you can't criticize them. How's that sound? Well, I certainly wouldn't want to be racist against the computer, and I certainly wouldn't uh, think that, uh, you know, any of the loving insurance companies would, you know, want to make anybody go broke. They've been so good for the country so far. Um, but as far as the shooting goes, uh, I mean, there's not much that I can really say that hasn't already been covered here ad nauseum. I mean, it fits the narrative. It pushes the racial division. And they know now that uh, Charleston has settled down but, you know, maybe we can get all these people to turn in their guns if the shoe's on the other foot. Maybe we'll have this guy shoot uh, a white person, and that'll, you'll, you know, you'll see the black-on-white violence, and maybe that'll get the white people to turn in their guns. Uh, and, you know, obviously, like I say, pushing the racial division, it completely fits the narrative. And in my opinion, something really stinks about this entire situation. I don't, I can't even really think of a mass shooting, quote-unquote, or a high-profile shooting like this that didn't seem like there was something more going on. Uh, well, there's been some of them that we caught red-handed being staged. Sirhan Sirhan uh, with RFK, uh, the situation a few years ago at the Aurora shooting. I mean, those were staged. We caught them. We know exactly what they did. It's unbelievable. Uh, and then you look at Sandy Hook, it, it just isn't real. I don't know what specifically happened, but the official story is a fairy tale. I mean, Jack of the Beanstalk isn't real, Santa Claus isn't real, and that is a giant theater operation complete with blue screens. And now even Rob Dew's uncle, who's a Navy SEAL, um, retired FBI, works for a big company. We have a reporter up there, and it's like, that's Rob Dew's uncle. And he's like, yeah, it doesn't add up. Something's going on. Never seen anything like this. There's no paperwork. They're covering something up.
I can't talk. Got to get out of here. So, I mean, that's how Twilight Zone this has gotten that there's like Navy SEAL FBI agents looking into this and, and then former top school safety heads are investigating it and saying this isn't real. This isn't real. This isn't real. I appreciate your call. And look, it shows how bold they are. Planned Parenthood said, we don't sell the body parts and make money. Now they've been caught making money on the new videos. A month or two ago, they said the videos weren't real. They finally found the headline, the coming age of self-driverless cars. What will auto insurers do when there are no drivers left to insure? And see, it sells it like, oh, it's going to stop wrecks. It's going gonna, it's gonna to stop. No, they're going to have a tax and they're going to have a highway safety fund, and they're going to have still have problems with the machines, and they're going to be busy in the next decade or two jacking up rates on people that are drivers. That's where the money's going to be, saying that the computers are safer. And we as consumers have to say, no, we're not going to be socially engineered. Good job finding that. Just a search tip. Uh, we finally thought, hey, put the date in. And, and ask for the cover. And, and I believe that's how they found it. But we'll print that article and cover it more. When I return, Robert in Missouri. Buckley in Missouri. Doug in Minnesota. Joshua in California and more. And then at the bottom of the next hour, we're going to have a special guest in studio who joins us from Toronto, Canada. Stay with us. I didn't mean to go off into a rant about driverless cars. It, it just shows how those of us that love innovation, love competition, see something like Uber. And I didn't research Uber the last few years. I just said, hey, it comes quicker. They're nicer. I love it. And then I found out, oh, my gosh, it's above the law. It gets to do whatever it wants, and it's anti-driver. And they won't let the taxi companies out of the control they're under. That's how the New World Order operates. They're always exempt from everything. They're above the law. They get to do whatever they want, and then the globalists get the profits, and it's all about basically making humans obsolete. How about we make globalists obsolete? I've got huge financial news that I need to get to, politics news, all the things we're getting distracted from right now, but this shooting's important because it's about survival. If we don't expose the fact that this was racially motivated and all part of the race war hype coming out of the White House, we will be collectively blamed for this. And that's why I get so angry, is I am sick of being blamed for what somebody else does. If some white guy goes and kills nine black people, I didn't do it. And if some black guy goes and shoots two white people, he, black people didn't do that either. But the folks that are hyping it up collectively that when a black person kills a white person or a black person kills a white person, vice versa, that it's the group's fault. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're part of ISIS and ISIS goes around killing people, you share responsibility. But if I'm part of a racial ethnic group and someone in my, quote, group does something, they're their own person. And I know our audience gets that, but we have to explain this to all the leftist followers who really mean well, but have bought into the guilt as children that they've done something wrong. And separately, the minorities then get a chip on their shoulder, some of them, and their whole world is through those goggles, through that distortion, that everybody's out to get them. I mean, if you go work somewhere and you act like people are out to get you, you're going to have a big problem. If you just are optimistic, have a good attitude, nine times out of ten, even if you're working with a bunch of jerks, you'll end up being successful. And that's what it comes down to. I mean, I've run into plenty of racists in my life against white people. I just laugh about it. And I, I know a lot of, quote, minorities that are very successful. Everybody wants to hang around with them and stuff because they're just cool people. They're not obsessed like the media wants them to be with a chip on their shoulder. Now, we're going to start the next hour, and I'm going to go directly to Robert, who's been holding everybody else. I briefly need to just remind you that InfoWarsLife.com has 30% off the colloidal silver at its already discounted price. Absolutely essential what it does for me and my family when I've been sick, when I've had a chest cold that antibiotics couldn't knock out. It knocked it out for me. Same thing for my dad. The same chest cold killed my uncle last year. 
Uh, and I don't recommend you know, you drink as much of it as I do. Talk to your doctor first, but it's serious stuff. 30% off one bottle, 50% off if you buy two bottles, get two free. Best deal out there. Super Male Vitality is the most concentrated, natural, purified, organic herbs and compounds known to boost male and female vitality. Super Male and Super Female Vitality are pretty similar formulas. Uh, I like the female vitality. On me, it works even better. Uh, it's not because I'm like a woman. It just, it just the, the particular herbs that it has added supercharge things. You can read all the incredible reviews at InfoWarsLife.com. It is now back in stock, and your purchase helps fund this operation. It's, it's really changed my life in so many ways. Experience it for yourself, and regardless, you're funding this operation. So we thank you for your support. InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. And don't forget, please, to subscribe to PrisonPlanet.tv. I want to thank all of you that do that. You make this possible. Thank you for listening. Third, let's go to Robert Alex in Missouri. Jones. Thank you for holding like a trooper, sir. You're on the air. Go ahead. What do you think of this tragic shooting in Virginia? Now, the number one news story in the world Two people dead. ISIS kills 300,000. Nobody cares. The media decides what to make the big story, though the footage is dramatic. They're now demonizing the Second Amendment. What do you expect to happen? What's your take? Let me, let me cover a couple subjects with you, Alex. It's hard to get through with you, and so just give me a couple minutes. I'm going to cover a few things. First, that shooting, I watched the footage once. It looked like something between a 9 millimeter and a 40 or a 45. The 110-pound woman, probably, he pops her three times and she can still run off. I'm questioning the validity of the footage, number one. Number two, Charleston. If, you would, if everybody would go to incendiaryarchive.com, I did a show four days after Charleston with Kyle Hunt from Renegade Broadcasting, renegadetribune.com, and we deconstructed Charleston every way from Sunday. Hillary Clinton was, happened to be in town that day giving a campaign speech at the Trident Technical College. There was a, there was a photographer with her named David Goldman took all the photos of her at the Trident College. Guess where he was that night? He got all the, those nice prayer circle pictures. David Goldman got all that footage. Um, federal law enforcement training centers, active shooter drills in Charleston from the 15th to the 19th. The hit went down on the 17th. Mayor Riley of Charleston, which sits on the 33rd parallel, by the way, Mayor Riley sits on the Mayors Against Gun Violence with... Mayor Tom Menino of Boston, the Boston hoax bombing, and guess who else? Michael Bloomberg. That guy's been in the mayorship of Charleston since the 70s. I got four pages worth of notes that deconstruct that as another Gladio-style false flag operation. Um, the, the body of uh, Senator Pinckney laying in that casket was a joke. It looked like a wax figure out of M Madame Tussauds. And so Charleston, I think, was a false flag. And, I, uh, you know, there's so much uh, research out there on the Internet on Charleston being a hoax. Now, or I'm not saying anybody wasn't killed, but, you know, they'll kill, they'll kill 3,000 people in the World Trade Center. They'll kill nine people in a church. It's not a big deal to these people. They're a bunch of Satanists. Now, well, clearly, though, if they're staged it, why would they mix the racial thing in unless they're trying to trigger whites to go out and start killing blacks? Well, no, they they were trying to stir up blacks because look at the war on the Confederacy, the Confederate symbol. No, no, Confederate I mean I know I know the shooting and I know the shooting in Charleston was if it was staged. I mean I know he wanted to start a race war. He supposedly said. I'm talking about why would they have a anti-gun event like this, and then make it basically have a narrative that makes Black Lives Matter look bad. Here's the thing, Alex. That kid was wearing a $1,000 um, ballistic vest. I did a show with Dr. Jim Fesser where we deconstructed Charleston. It, I, it looks very, very bad, and there's a ton of research on YouTube and the Internet about Charleston. Now let me move on to 9-11 real quick. I, I've, I've been hearing you say lately the Saudis quarterback 9-11. Well, I've got a stack of books that say the Israelis um, quarterback 9-11. There's 50 times more evidence that the Israelis, who are joined at the hip by the, with, with the Saudis, by the way, Wayne Madsen's book really kind of covers that, the, the sword and the star, but I've got books upon books about the Israelis, the same people that hit us on the Levant affair, the USS Liberty, the sick Jonathan Pollard on us, they did 9-11, uh, Victor Thorne, Christopher Bolin, 
um, Edward Hendry's books. They, I mean, if you read those books, any of those books from any of those authors, you're going to know that the Israelis 